Hello, 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 hello. Wherever you are located on our thought-provoking planet called Earth, I hope you all have an insightful day wherever you are located this day, evening, or night. I'm going to be talking about one of my or one of the world's greatest television sci-fi shows. You guessed it. I'm going to be talking about the phenomenal, sensational, spectacular Star Trek. In this video, I'm sorry. Yeah, this video that I'm making on YouTube will cover every uh, incarnation of the Star Trek. From the first one that aired in 1960 up until the present day, Picard and beyond. This is what I want to talk about. Have you ever noticed in Star Trek, maybe even in Star Wars, but preferably Star Trek, when they land on a planet, they never have on any breathing apparatus. Now, is that because, allegedly, that they always land on? I think it's called an M-class, an M-class planet that's identical to Earth. So, in a Star Wars universe, do all of their planets have oxygen, oxygen-rich environments? Because I never once in Star Trek saw whenever they land on a planet, they never have any type of breathing apparatus on. They always breathe as if they're in their own neighborhood, their own house. Have you ever? The only time they ever do have uh, an outfit on to help them breathe is when they're in the depths of space where there is no breathing. Uh, <laughs> any breathing of material. Now, before I go on, if you like my little discussion about why don't they ever, Star Trek, ever have a breathing apparatus on, give me my thumbs up. If you notice that too, that every planet they land on, they walking on the planet as if they walking in their living room. Give me my thumbs up and leave a comment. Now, let me continue on. Like I said, I've been watching Star Trek since the 1970s. That's when I was really, I grew up in the 1970s. I was, so I, and when it came in the 1970s, I, I think I was basically watching the reruns of the original Star Trek series. And when they land, they never had on a breathing apparatus. Nothing. And they always landed on the most inhospitable planet around. Like I said in one of my earlier videos, they always seem to land on a desert-like world. Especially in the 60s, when we started Star Trek Next Generation, they always seem to land on a planet that seems to be hostile to life. It may have a little area where it's a, a, a savanna or a little heaven or a garden of Eden in a little teeny area, about five miles in diameter. But for the most part, it's barren. So how in the world can he always land on an M-class planet that has oxygen? Because they're in space. Do all the aliens seem to breathe oxygen that they be talking to? Now, in a Star Trek, and then when they land on the planet, I'm going to take it further. When they always land on a planet, they always seem to encounter a humanoid creature. Wow, so that's why I probably be, a, that's why they probably don't need no uh, mask on. Because they always seem to land on a planet where the creatures is humanoid. And you know... And I know in the Star Trek universe, they have them Klingons who are not completely human, but the humans are able to survive on Klingon just as easy. I thought Klingon would have a, a heavier atmosphere, a heavier gravity than Earth. But a normal weak human who's weaker than the Klingon walk on the Klingon homeworld 
as if they walking on earth or as if they're walking in Disneyland. They're not bothered one bit by the planet of Klingon. And I forgot the, I forgot the name of the Klingon homeworld. But if you know how the Klingon homeworld look, it looks like a desert. A filthy, dry desert. Now, that's what they see on the TV. It may have more pretty areas of it. But you know, when we watch it on Star Trek Next Generation or any Star Trek movie, whenever they come into the Klingon throne world, central area, it's always look barren and it got the spikes sticking out the ground. It looks red like it got lava everywhere. So how in the world can those people, a human, walk around on just the Klingon homeworld with no breathing apparatus on? How? Because it... Cause I said the Klingons they stronger, so that means the gravity on Klingon has to be heavier than the gravity on Earth. They stronger, they more endurable. They got tougher skin, but the humans who I see who was a Klingon, they never say, oh, "I feel." At least they can say, "I feel." I feel a little bit tired being here. I feel a little worn out. No, they never say that. They walk around just as happy. Right then another planet Avenue. where the humans walk around and without any type of breathing when we on Vulcan. When we on Vulcan, we walk around on another barren desert looking planet that, in, that looks in hospital to life and the creatures on and the creatures that I saw on Vulcan they look like they completely demonic looking. They look completely like they would eat you in a heartbeat. So the, the, the creatures on Vulcan, they tough. But a normal human walking around on Vulcan without no face mask, surviving the gravitational pull of Vulcan. Like I said, as if that once again, as if you sit on your couch. That's how they walk around Vulcan. And the Vulcans are completely different from human. They have the green blood. And I know from when I was watching Spock and all of them, a Vulcan. It's about 1.5 times as strong as a human. So that must mean they got a denser body and that, that planet may have a slightly different gravitational pull. But again, the human walk around on Vulcan as if they are walking around on Earth. No breathing apparatus at all. Nothing. And the thing about it, now, I said I've been watching this, uh, all of Star Trek since I was a child. And I said, since I watched Star Trek the original, Star Trek the Next Generation, Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I saw basically all the movies. And my recollection, I never heard of them say uh, the little communicator helped them survive on a planet. Now, if I'm wrong, Correct me in the comments section. Now, I do know the communicator does have a universal translator in it. I do know that, Mount. But I don't know if that little tiny thing can, can give you your oxygen, surround you for fuel of oxygen, and it give you an Earth-like gravity. I don't know if the technology in that thing go that far. But like I said, if it does, if it's an episode... When they get deep and tell how that communicator works, and it's called the communicator, see? It's not, not, it's not called a life support system mechanism. It's just called a communicator. They hit it, they call a ship, or it got that universal translator in it. Now, the thing I wanna say before I go, and you know in the Star Trek universe, they have many different planets. They may have, they may be humanoid looking, like with arms and legs, but some of them look like fish. Some of them have blue skin. Some of them look like reptiles, and etc. We never get to visit a planet of a non humanoid creature. So that's probably why they can survive those planets a little bit, because they go to planets with humanoid looking creatures. I would like to see in the future, hey, go to a planet where the people don't look completely human. I know they got arms and legs, but they don't got, go to the planet where the guy got the fish head or the scaly hands 
or the six fingers. They don't go to those worlds. So that's it, my good people. That was my little gripe about... And it just came to me at a whim of a moment. I said, I was thinking about Star Trek when I was driving. With my spouse doing Uber Eats. Hey, in Star Trek, how do you keep surviving on all them planets with no uh, breathing device? So once more before I go, if you like my discussion, give me my thumbs up. If you have a comment about a detailed description of the communicator, but it's called the communicator, not no breathing apparatus. Let me know, and I'll dig up the episode, and I'll watch it. If you would like to subscribe to hear me talk about more sci-fi, movie content, anything that I, that I find appealing, subscribe. Until the next time, peace.